So first of all, the reaction he's using there is quite different because this was with an alcohol and that's with water. So the way an alcohol reacts is different than water. How does an alcohol react? Like this. The two alcohol molecules come in um, and you end up with that makes sense. two Nuclear OR groups. Yeah. Now, what am I talking? Uh, but here they're connected between each other. So the two carbonyls are connected. Whereas if you get water, you would get this, right? This is how alcohols react, and this is how water reacts. Right, right, right. Okay. okay. All right. So um, now, first of all, I'm not sure I understand your question exactly. Are right, you asking how do you know to put in water? No, so that's perfect. Okay, so let's say I add in water. So I would right. say, okay, this would be an OH and an OH, an right. OH and an OH. But look, it's not like that. It's actually connected. All right. So you had gotten this far. Yes. And the question is, how can you get from here to here? Right. And the answer is, this is synthesis, the answer is the way to get from here to here is to add H3O plus. Right? Okay. And you're wondering why that works. Right. Okay. And why would he write H3O plus? Why would he write H2O? Like, how would a student... See, when I look at his answer key, then I end up being very confused because he doesn't write H3O plus. Is it sloppiness or... Yeah. Well, he should have either written H3O plus or he should have written water. H and an acid. Thank you. Okay, I want to make sure. That That's right. I'm not because you crazy. do need both the water. Uh, you need both the water and an acid. And you can see that step. you need water because this has one more oxygen than that does. And that's right? in the same step, correct? The oh yeah, you want to put them together. So I, I do think that you need an acid catalyst uh, for this to work. That's right. You know, every uh, it might be an experimental fact that in this case you don't need the acid catalyst, but you certainly wouldn't go wrong by putting in the right. acid catalyst. Right. Okay. Um, so uh, all right. So we put these in. So you were saying, gee, that should um, turn this guy. I just said that that should turn this guy into this, and this guy into this. It right. seems like that would do similar, this. Similar with an O M minus and an H two O, right? Right. This is, that okay. Would be base catalyst. So based on what I just said before, it seems like we should get this product, not this product. Right? Yes. Okay. Well, here's the deal. What is the deal? Remember that you would get this, but there's an equilibrium. Right. What's actually going to be happening is these are going to keep going back and forth between um, um, dialcohols and carbonyls. This is an equilibrium, so this is going to keep going back and forth between dialcohols and carbonyls. So sometimes it's going to look like this, but sometimes it's going to go back to being a carbonyl. And in one of the times when this has gone back to being a carbonyl and this still has the dialcohols, that's going to attack. This guy's going to come in and attack, so I just and that's how you're going to end up with this. Okay, I didn't know that. Thank you. So so the key idea, again, is uh, a lot of the reactions we're seeing here are equilibrium reactions. And he's really testing this idea that they're equilibrium. Um, so you can, um, so you kind of uh, you focus on the part that's more helpful to you. You say, well, gee, I know I'm going to get some dialcohols, but I'm also sometimes going to have a carbonyl here. And then you hope that when you have the carbonyl here and the alcohol over here, this is going to come in and attack. But yeah, I would say that's a hard problem to see that. Okay, thank you. Because we have an alcohol and a carbonyl, you said, right? Yeah, so okay. notice that you want to watch out for that pattern. You want to watch out for carbon. Anytime you see a carbonyl, I should ask, are there any good nucleophiles around? And certainly you should watch out for alcohols. That's our, one of our major reactions we've seen, an alcohol and a carbonyl. That's right. And it looked here a second ago, it looked like there was no carbonyls. It right. looked like... Because, I mean, to form that... It looked like all you have is alcohols. Right, but, but what you have to have in the back of your mind is actually sometimes this will still be a carbonyl. It's flipping back and forth. But it's going back, and, back and forth. That's because, right. I mean, to even make that, we, we made that from a carbonyl and an alcohol to right. create that. That's right. We, so then we're essentially going back again. That's right. Or was. maybe, I mean, if you're actually showing the mechanism, all you would do, uh, yeah, I, I guess that's the best way you know, to think about it. That's right. Forth. That's right. That's the best way to think about it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, we did some pretty hard problems today. Um, and again, the key thing is, um, to redo those problems. The very first thing you should do is just redo the problems that we just did and also mark them so you can come back and do them again in a few days or a week before you take the test. Repetition is really on um, so the key. He's like loaded, he put a lot of problems on and right. all, they all take like 15 right. minutes to just look at. I mean, right. so it's So it would be best if you could do all the problems he's assigned, but if I had a choice between doing, doing some problems repeatedly and doing all the problems once, I would definitely prefer to do some of the problems repeatedly. Lots of people do every single problem in the book and get very little benefit. If you're not repeating the problems, you might as well not be doing them in the first place. That includes the problems that we just did together. And also, the key thing we tried to focus on, so we did these mechanism problems, right? 
you won't see those problems again. Yeah. Right? So how can this help you? Only if you think about what the techniques were that we used. Uh, and the key techniques were, again, the numbering, really. Um, so again, the numbering is hard. You have to take your time and try to look for the landmarks for the numbering. And then all the little thought process we, processes we went through, like asking how has this particular atom changed precisely. All those little thought processes are the things that start to make the difference between whether people can do those hard problems and whether they can't. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank Thanks. you so much. These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. Uh, there's a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos.htm or you can just use the link in the info box. By the way, I also offer tutoring via Skype and you can find more information about that Skype tutoring service at my website.